Good afternoon, I'm David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. And we're really on fire out here today. Uh, it's been about 90, 95 degrees all day. And it's been that way for the last two or three days. The rain's finally passed and uh, we're trying to cool down here. And this gave me an idea for the video. I want to talk to you today about the dangers and about the benefits of the sun on a hot day like today. Now some of you may do desert survival or you may just be out in the bush on a very, very hot day. There's some important things to know and I want to share those with you to keep you safe and to keep you healthy when you're in the bush on a day like today. Now the first thing I want to talk to you about are there are five heat loss or heat gain mechanisms. And today we're pulling all those heat gain mechanisms into us. Uh, there's conduction. I am conducting the sun. I am a, a big blob that is conducting the sun and, and it's just heating me up. There's convection and there is no wind out here really today. Because of that, and, and you can see it's just totally still out here, there's no breeze blowing through me to cool me down. Then there's radiation. I said that I was conducting the sun. Well, the sun is radiating, and it is radiating very, very hot today. Finally, there's respiration. Respiration is my breath coming out, and of course, as I breathe today, I'm losing water out of my system. And then there's evaporation. Evaporation is basically known as sweat. Your body gets hot, it begins to put water or pull water out of your cells so that you can cool down, hopefully from the breeze that's around, which we don't have today. So on a miserable day like today, all these things are working against you in order to overheat your core temperature. Now many of you have heard of hypothermia, that's where your core temperature goes down. We're not having any problem today with hypothermia. What we're having a problem with is the very opposite, which could cause heat stroke or which could cause sunstroke, and, and uh, that could be debilitating to people. In fact, it could kill Now, how do we combat these heat gain mechanisms? Because we really don't want the heat bearing down on us today. Well, there's a couple of things we can do. As for conduction, as I said before, I'm conducting the sun's rays. What I've done is I've put on a white bandana, a skull cap, if you would. I've also put on white clothing, uh, white shirt. This will help to reflect the sun's rays back instead of gathering to me, which a dark hat or dark clothing would do. So you want to make sure that you dress with light colors, whites, grays, light blue, if you're in the bush on a day like today. Another thing is the convection. Now, as I said, we don't have very much wind out here. In the last five minutes, it's picked up a little bit. But I can stop convection a little bit because something else that is done is my body actually pumps air off of my body. And it does that through the arms of my sleeves. So if I had long sleeves on, I would be warmer. It does that through the uh, pants legs. So what I'm doing is I'm wearing shorts. I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. I've got it open a little bit. That allows that hot air to escape and to get away from my body. So I'm actually working with convection here to get that away from me. Uh, the third is ra radiation. As I said, that sun is radiating its heat on me. Now what I can do in order to get that heat off of me is to simply move. I don't have to stay in the sun. Follow me, we've got a couple of real big hickory trees right here. So what I'll do is I will move into the shade and that will lower the temperature. I can feel a drastic difference in temperature right now. Now, I was going to show you this. Uh, many bandanas are kind of small. This is a two foot by two foot. We also have some three foot by three foot. Or you can make your own. Just go down, get some cotton material or some nylon material and cut it out into three foot by three foot sections. It's very simple to put these on. You just simply fold them into a triangle put that triangle over top of your head and then go back and tie that in the back. You want to tie it as tight as you can. You can see that even the 2x2 two two doesn't go very far down my neck. But if I had a 3x3 three three or a different kind of uh, bandana that would pull that off, then I could go ahead and get that to go down my back and over my neck and it would keep me cooler there as well. So that's a very good thing to have in your e-kit is a couple of bandanas. I carry a couple light colored ones. I also carry a couple that are a little darker. 
I also carry one to use instead of toilet paper and that is clearly labeled so I don't make a mistake. Now the uh, fourth thing on our list was respiration. I can't stop breathing so there's not a whole lot that I can do about losing uh, moisture through radiation uh, through respiration although I can keep hydrated on a day like today. Uh, you have what's called an obligatory urinary output and if you're not going to the bathroom enough then you're probably dehydrated or if your urine is extremely yellow or orange then you might need to have some more water. On a day like today I might drink a gallon, two gallons even of water out in the bush. So that will help with respiration. Keep yourself hydrated. Give your body enough water to work with so that you don't lose that moisture content. And uh, lastly is evaporation. Now again I can't evaporate fast enough. My, my perspiration is so I can help that by actually taking some water and putting onto my head covering, putting right there on my bandana, allowing it to run down over my clothing. That will help all these things because any moisture in the air now, uh, or any wind in the air, I'm sorry, will actually help pull off the heat from my body and cool me down. Now I could go jump down in the lake, but I'm not going to do that. That lake's filled with snapping turtles and all sorts of different things. So I would rather take a little bit of fresh water pour over top of me or go back in the swimming pool. But out in the bush, I might jump into a lake. I might jump into a stream. That would help cool my body down again. What we want to do is in order not to get sunstroke, not to get heat stroke, is to keep our body core temperature down. Now what I want to do is look at some of the benefits because it's not all negative when you have sun out here. Heat is useful for a lot of things and we're not going to get into it today, but you could dry your food, dehydration, by simply laying it out on a rack and allowing the sun to dehydrate your food so that you could eat it at a later date that will help preserve your food. Or we can also use the sun to help us start a fire. And that's one of the most important things out in the bush because I need fresh water. I need to put water in my system and I can't get fresh water out of a stream anymore without purifying it. So the easiest way to purify is to boil. We'll talk about that in another video. But let me show you how easy it is with the sun like we have today to start a fire with a magnifying lens and with our tinder can that we had uh, made just the other day. We, we had this tinder can we made and I'm going to show you another use for it. Uh, we'll take the top off of here and I've got a Fresnel lens. Now it doesn't matter what kind of a lens you use. You can use a Fresnel lens, you can use a magnifying glass, you can use a lens out of your binoculars, you can even use your eyeglasses, a soda bottle with water in it, a balloon, uh, a, a prophylactic, uh, anything that, that will take that water and make it magnify can be used. But I want to show you with a Fresnel lens how quick we can start a fire in this kind of a heat. Now you'll notice the little X in our box, in our tinder can, and what I'm going to do is just focus the sun into that box for a moment and you'll see it start smoking almost immediately. Now I'm putting it in the X. I could put it in the top if I wanted to. Either way would work just as fine. But I'm going to radiate that heat and magnify it into that can for just a couple seconds here. And then blow and we've got our flame. So that quickly you can have a fire in the bush. I'm Dave Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. I was glad to have you with this little segment. Join us again for another video.